All right, the point of this video is to eliminate any confusion or doubts you may have about paint inspection with a paint thickness gauge. The last thing you want to do is go out and spend hundreds of dollars on a fancy gauge and then not totally understand the readings. Like, do you really know what numbers are factory and what isn't? And if the factory paint job is so uniform and consistent, then how come you get such widely different readings throughout the same car or even within the same panel? Maybe the numbers aren't as high or as low as you were expecting, and deep down inside, you aren't totally confident that this paint job is original or not. In reality, there are a lot of misconceptions surrounding this topic, so we're going to dive into this and clear things up. Alright, if you're someone who chases original, unrestored, or low mileage cars, new or old, this video is going to be very important to you. Online auctions have become a big deal over the past decade, and thanks to COVID, cars are being purchased sight unseen more than ever before. So if all you're going to rely on is a bunch of photos of paint readings, you better know exactly what they mean. Again, it doesn't matter if it's a survivor car from the 80s or even a new car from the dealership. Knowing if your car is wearing its original paint actually matters. And it's not just for uncovering accident history. Original paint is stronger, longer lasting, and more resistant to rock chips than any respray. And we all know how factory paint isn't perfect, having things like orange peel or whatnot. But when it comes purely to strength, nothing adheres as well as original paint. And it's one of the main reasons why a respray hurts the value of a collector car, no matter how good the respray looks. This is where having the ability to gauge paint thickness comes in handy, as a respray will always read higher than the factory finish. A gauge will also reveal a lack of consistency between panels. But don't think that you have to own one of these things to be able to spot paintwork or confirm original paint. In fact, evidence of paintwork will almost always expose itself if you know what to look for. And sure, this is helpful for quickly catching a thick 13mm respray at the touch of a button, but we're not talking about the obvious scenarios here. We're talking about the scenarios where the numbers are low enough and the paint looks good enough that you become uncertain about what you're looking at. And that brings us to our next point. It's not good to rely only on a gauge. In reality, when I'm out in the field inspecting for paintwork, I use this as a supplement to a visual inspection. You need to open the door, look at the jams, look for signs of masking lines, overspray, etc., as I'll get into later. But first, real quick, you'll hear me refer to measurements in mils or microns. You can take the reading in either one. All right, so you wanna take multiple measurements throughout each panel. But me personally, I like to start off by comparing measurements from two similar surfaces. For example, a flat surface to a flat surface. You don't wanna compare a concave uh, panel measurement to a horizontal panel like a hood or a trunk because paint cures differently on different surfaces. Literally, as it's curing, it flows and levels itself out. And on the sides of the car, it's trying to do that while trying to defy gravity. And that makes flow control very hard on the sides of the car. And that means there's going to be more variation on the sides of the car compared to a flat surf, or a horizontal surface like the hood or roof. In addition, there will be a variation near the jams and panel edges as these are painted first and the overspray will add to the overall thickness in these areas. So keep that in mind. You can actually see for yourself when you take measurements on the sides of the car, it'll be 147, 118, 129. Okay, I, from my personal experience, I found variation can be between 35 to 40 microns, and that's normal for a factory modern paint shop. Now, know that these cars are painted with electromagnetic bell cup sprayers. That's what the factory uses. These robotic sprayers put out charged paint and spray it onto an oppositely charged body. Not only that, but these sprayers have a 90% transfer rate, which is way higher than your typical body shop gun, which has maybe a 40, 45% transfer rate. All right, because of that, the OEMs can apply one coat, one coat of the base color, and that's all they need for complete coverage, okay? A body shop will need two to three base coats to provide the same coverage as the factory. Same thing with clear coat. So what you're left with is a finished factory paint job that's pretty thin, and a repainted panel that's thick because of all those coats. Now for the big questions. What numbers am I actually looking for? Is there a factory paint thickness spec for my car? And how high does the reading have to be for it to be considered a repaint? First off, there is no factory paint spec for any car because there are too many variables affecting thickness. For example, thickness varies between different panels, as we discussed. It varies between different models of the same make, different years of the same model. It even varies between the color. 
Yes, that's right. If you want to get nitpicky, thickness varies between different colors. Silver, for example, has great hiding power, which means car makers can get away with a thinner coat compared to other colors, like yellow, red, or any premium tricoat metallic, all of which require a thicker application for the same coverage. Using paint evaluation equipment, manufacturers can actually determine the minimum thickness required for each color and program that into their robotic sprayers so that they don't waste any more paint than they have to. Multiply this times hundreds of thousands of cars and you can see how it saves them money. And it's tactics like these that have reduced modern paint thickness to as low as 100 microns on some cars. Now, typical modern vehicles of the last 15 years will range from 100 to 140 microns. It wasn't until around 2006, 2007 or so when most cars were within this range. Because by this time, all factory paint shops were officially converted to waterborne paint. All the testing and experimentation had been done, and there were 20 years of trial and error since waterborne debuted in the late 80s. Plus, the primer was strong enough and flexible enough by this point that it didn't need to be layered so thick for rock chip protection. In fact, if you want to get an idea of how paint thickness evolved throughout the years, click on the link in the description. Now, throughout my years in the car business, a common misconception that got thrown around was anything 200 microns or higher is a repaint. Now, there are two things misleading about that statement. For one, I made a lot of people believe that anything under 200 microns is factory original, which is absolutely not true. For example, here's a fender on a 2015 GTI showing one of the lowest repainted readings I've ever encountered at 148 microns. This reading could easily pass as a factory thickness. And while it's hard for you to tell from the photo, the fender was well matched in quality to the panel next to it. So naturally I was impressed, but honestly, you'll rarely encounter a quality respray that registers so thin. Just know that I've personally come across multiple resprays out in the field that read under 200 microns, and they look just fine to the untrained eye. So you need to be aware of that possibility. And yes, while the vast majority of factory paint jobs will register on 200 microns, there are cards that hover around the 200 mark from the factory, most notably modern Ferraris. Since 2004, Ferrari has been using a powder coated primer on all their vehicles. Unlike the waterborne primer you find everywhere else, these powder coats have no liquid solvent, just a thick layer of powder that's fused onto the body. There's no water to evaporate as it cures. That means everything sprayed on the car stays on the car. None of it leaves the surface. So you're left with a thickness that's almost twice that of waterborne primer. And guess what? Ferrari isn't the only car maker using powder coating in its paint department. The point is, is that you shouldn't assume there's a definitive cutoff where factory paint thickness magically ends and the respray magically begins. It just doesn't work like that. The crossover between factory paint and a respray is a gray area. And this is the area where people get confused and thrown off. So if you're getting paint readings within this range on a modern car, don't be so quick to jump to conclusions until you visually inspect for signs of paintwork. If you don't know how, I'll show you. Click the link in the bio where I'll teach you some tricks I've learned from the pros as well as a few I've learned myself. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you're an enthusiast or a collector who enjoys these educational videos, and if you love reviews about old cars, I highly encourage you to subscribe. This is a channel run by genuine car people, and we have a lot of great content planned for YouTube, so stay tuned.